this, this just might be the most important, fantastic, amazing thing I have found in Photoshop in over a decade. Over a decade. Sorry if I'm yelling, I apologize. I'll, I'll calm down a little bit if I can. It's exciting. It's so exciting. I've wanted this for so long. You do not understand. Maybe you do. This is a time lapse. Yeah, you've seen them before. Cool, great. Maybe it's not even the coolest looking one. I, I, whatever, whatever. <laughs> this is a time. Don't worry about what's on it, by the way. <laughs> nothing too fancy, nothing too crazy. Something, nothing, nothing you haven't seen before. It's just a regular time lapse. But I will say, this is the interesting part. This is not Procreate. This was not drawn in Clip Studio. This wasn't drawn in IBIS or IBIS or EBIS or however you want to say it. This wasn't even drawn in Krita. This right here was drawn in Photoshop. Now, we've been able to make Photoshop time lapses before. This is nothing extraordinarily new, but, but I will say the new thing is this was not recorded in OBS. This wasn't recorded in any third party screen recording software. This was not, this is a plugin. Finally, this is finally, oh. <sighs> I, I can't contain my level of hype and excitement. Finally. This is a plugin for Photoshop. You install it, you turn it on, and it acts sort of like the Krita one. I don't know if any of y'all ever tried Krita. I, I, I make it my job to try pretty much all the major, you know, art programs and apps and stuff. Krita has one that's kind of like this. Krita is open source. It, it could do pretty much anything. Uh, but essentially what this is, it doesn't quite record your actions. It records little screenshots, you could say, little snippets of the, of the file itself and it will record when you flip the canvas and stuff, but it won't record when you're rotating the canvas. It doesn't record, you know, moving things like that. It, it, it's, it's fine. It records the image. It records the canvas flipping. So that's a little different than Procreate, uh, which you might have been used to or not. Uh, Procreate does not record canvas flipping, uh, but that's that's actually, that's about it. That's really about it. I mean, it's, it's, it's a great little time-lapse plugin. And it is so incredibly obscure that I had to dig. I had to enlist the help of Twitter. I had to go online and just scream into the void, which is like the last thing you want to do when you're looking for something. But that is like, the that's, that's how desperate I've been for something like this. Now the link below, hopefully it's still up. I really hope so. It probably is. The link below is to GitHub and it goes to what's called F record and it's made by a Chinese developer and it's really simple. Uh, the UI looks like this. As you can see, there's only a few things to worry about. Uh, so even if you can't read this, which fair, I can't either. Uh, I can essentially tell you what this is. Top left button means start essentially <laughs> the second one over is delete so it's, it resets your progress and stuff and the far right one is like render the video now the drop down stuff you'll notice these little numbers this is this is the frames that it has recorded or captured and then you've got like how long you want the time lapse in seconds and stuff like that i keep the middle one zero just for kicks and gigs to install this you have to download from github you click this and when you download it it'll be f record main most likely. Again, I can't tell the future, but so far it's F record main. You unzip it and then you open it up and you'll see F record 1.0, 2.0, license, readme, etc. You want to go for the 2.0. Open it up and you see win because it's for Windows PC. It's, it's not for Mac, I don't think. I haven't tried it on Mac. I don't have a Mac. I didn't fall for that trap. I've, I've, the whole story, don't worry about it. For Windows, it's for Windows PCs. If you don't go to Mac, I apologize. You can give it a shot. Let me know how it is in the comments. <laughs> But when you open that, you'll see F record CEP and F record generator. Now these go in two separate spots. Follow along. We'll start from the first one, F record CEP. What you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go find your Photoshop file in file explorer. It could be in your program files, wherever you have your Photoshop file saved with all your goodies, the actual, the, the meat of the Photoshop stuff, wherever you've got that saved, you're going to open that up and you're going to go to required CEP extensions. Then you're going to drop this file in there. F record CEP. You're going to drop the whole file right into this extensions tab. The next one, F record generator. It's a little easier. You go back to your Photoshop file and you open up plugins. Then you go to generator and then you drop that one in there. Just go pop. 
pop that right in there, pop that sucker right in the whole folder. And then that's done. Now you open up Photoshop. In Photoshop, you're gonna wanna go to Edit, Preferences. And when you open that up, you wanna go to your Plugins tab. Now, all you really gotta worry about is make sure Enable Generator is checked and then Load Extensions Panels, that would help. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's actually required. And that's that's done. Then you hit OK and you close Photoshop. And if, if you made any changes, it will be enacted next time you open it. So let's open it back up. Now, if you can't see your extensions tab, which is this little icon right here, if you don't see that, you're going to want to go to top. You're going to go to window and extensions. Legacy is what I've got. Now, I'm, I use the whole creative cloud thing because I'm a sucker, apparently, you know, a sheep. Um, but <laughs> I pay I pay Photoshop. I'm so, forgive me. All right. I'm in a I'm professional, professional business. I have to pay for these things sometimes. Uh, but extension legacy and F record two should be there because it's the 2.0 version. When you open that up, you'll see the window. Hopefully you might, you might get a warning saying that uh, the extension wasn't written or titled properly. There is a fix for that. If you get that, I'll explain how to fix it in the end. Hopefully it'll fix me. It, it worked for me. I got that warning me. All right, so I know how to fix it. <laughs> okay, so don't worry. Now, if you don't, then let's just continue on. You'll see, you know, button one, button two, button three, blue, 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 and then you and, and you see a bar. In that bar, you're going to want to paste the address where you want these things to go. Make sure it is a drive that has a lot of memory, because <laughs> if you're painting for a long time, like I do sometimes, this one was pretty fast. If you're painting for a long time big file it's gonna take a couple gigs because it's it's you know it's 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 frames of a video and so if you've got a big file it's gonna be huge so what i do is i would go to my file where i want the the videos to be saved which is in my my d drive go to videos i made a folder called photoshop and then i just copied this paste it in right there and then uh the one you really got to worry about next is just this the seconds you, you'll see this one down the bottom i changed it to 60 60 is a common common one that's a minute obviously uh, if you want five minutes you go to 300 seconds for example uh, but that's not something you got to worry about until the end when you're ready you just press the left blue button and it starts don't you know you normally got to close it but you, you can minimize the thing like this so it's just kind of out of the way and it's going to be going it's going to be going while you're working and you'll notice it stops the, z the zero started going up because it started recording frames but if you stop moving it stops recording frames and you can rotate the canvas and stuff but if you flip it, it, it that counts <laughs> if there's a change in the canvas it will record that frame so now you're pretty much all set uh, once you're done you're going to want to click this button right here and then when you're ready to render it you click the right far right button it'll turn white and it'll start going through the percentages like 90 you know 20 percent 40 percent when it's done a new window will pop up <laughs> i can't read it but hit okay and the file that you designated for the video to go it will have other files populated in it the one you want to worry about for the video will be an output folder go there and your video should be in that folder which is so neat so it'll make these files and one of the files it'll make is called process images. When you open that up, all of the screenshots, essentially the frames of the video, you don't have to worry about cleaning this up. You can leave that just right there as is, but just keep in mind, they will be there until either you delete them or, and it's the coolest part, you don't have to, or you click this middle button and it's gonna be like, you know, another window pop up is gonna say, hey, whoa, it's gonna delete a bunch of stuff. And you just say, cool, it's fine with me. And you do, bam, done, cleans it all up. And they're gone. Don't worry about it again. Uh, you obviously can't edit, you know, you can't add time or anything like that when the frames are gone. But when the process images are still there and you haven't cleaned them up, you haven't deleted them, you haven't done the middle button, you can change the seconds to be a different time. You could say, okay, great, I have a 30 second one. Now I'll also have a five minute one for a video or whatever. You can do that and hit the you know far right button and it'll start processing a video for that size, that speed using the uh, the ratio or however it calculated. So I really don't know the, the guts of it. It would help a lot more if I understood what these things said, but I'm just so happy. I'm just so happy that we finally have a, a, a native, I say native, <laughs> a plugin, a script, if you will, that can just do this in Photoshop. We don't have to open up third party apps and programs. It's just right there. You know, it's just so nice. It's just so nice to finally have a 10 years, 10, 10 years. I've been wanting this. Can you believe that? More than 10 years, actually, now that I think about it. And like, 
we know they could do it probably i mean this this creator did it anyway, i'm gonna start ranting all right so now so if you got the warning that says extension could not be loaded because it was not properly signed this is actually a relatively easy fix. It's scary if you don't mess with this stuff very often, but follow my steps exactly and you should be fine. <laughs> should be, okay, hopefully. It worked for me, it, I did some digging, I figured it out. So this is how we do it, okay? You, you hit the Windows button or you enter your search bar and you go to REG Edit. And you'll see here it says regedit.msc. Click that, open it up, and then you're going to want to go to the second one here, H key current user, and then software, Adobe, and then you'll see these CSX number, CSX number. You might have a couple. What you want to do is you're going to click one of them and you're going to right click over here with these, hit new and string value. Then you type in and type this in exactly <laughs> player debug mode with capitals on the first letters, capital P, capital D, capital M, and then click off, hit done, okay? Then you wanna double click this, and where it says value data, type one and hit okay, and that's done. Now you go to the next CSX, well, you don't have to, but you good best practices just in case. Uh, you're gonna go to the next one, do the same thing, player debug mode, value one, and then exit out of that, close Photoshop, open Photoshop back up, go to window, and extensions legacy, F record to, and that should work. It worked for me. I had the problem, it worked for me. And this is the current result. It te I tested it, it works great. I was, I was, this piece took like, I think like an hour or so. I do these things on Twitter where I'm like, hey, I need to do a warm up piece. Uh, give me a, give me an OC, you know, give me, give me something to draw and then give me a word and I'll try and incorporate that word. This one was like this person's OC and their word was mischievous or, you know, mischief or whatever, mischievous. Uh, but that's that, that's done, that's it. Uh, I know I have I don't post that often, but when I do, I always try to make sure it's very useful. <laughs> and like, this is the most useful thing that I have personally come across with Photoshop in so long since I'm more excited about this than when I first figured out gradient maps. Uh, and I'm not even kidding. And if you don't know what that is, that's fine. If you do know what that is, then you're like, whoa, no way. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, wait, dude, wait. But if you're into Photoshop, if you know what gradient maps are and you know what Photoshop is, chances are you'd be psyched for this too. So thank you so much for watching. I hope this was useful, entertaining, uh, or helpful. Leave a like if you like it, a dislike if you dislike it. Subscribe to see more. I don't, like, you know, I don't post often, but when I do, I make sure it's the juice. You feel me? <laughs> Oh, side note, I'm making a video game. Anyway, bye.